ya inilah diri aku. Untuk dilarang-larang, aku belum bisa. Indonesia is a melting pot of cultures and has the largest Muslim population of any country on earth. In recent years, there's been a rise of intolerance with minorities, including the transgender community, under attack by Muslim fundamentalists. Kalau dia laki-laki, dia harus menerima kodratnya sebagai laki-laki. But now, some feel the time is right to speak out against intolerance and demand the same rights all Indonesians enjoy. Tetapi saya ingin membuka wacana kepada masyarakat Indonesia bahwa kita waria itu punya potensi. Here, transgender women are traditionally called waria, which you get from joining the Indonesian words for woman and man. I was born in the wrong body. At least God, please let me die in the right body. Yang mengharuskan kita menjadi seorang waria itu Allah. There's been massive change in Indonesia since the end of dictatorship. Now the challenge is whether the country can fully accept minorities like the waria and embark on a new era of change. I'm in the inner sanctum with contestants in the Miss Kabaya pageant. It's a celebration of the traditional Javanese dress, the Kabaya, on the Waria body. Mama Yuli is their undisputed queen. She's the head of the Indonesian Waria Communication Forum and a tireless campaigner for Waria rights. But it's been a long way to the top for 53-year-old Mama Yuli. But she's no ordinary housewife. She's constantly lobbying one politician or another, and she's the first warrior in Indonesia to graduate from an Islamic university. Dulu tuh kita belum lihat waria yang ke kantor dan waria lain tuh dulu kita tahu waria tapi jarang dia mau dandan dan pergi sekolah atau kuliah atau kerja dengan pakaian wanita. Tapi begitu Mami Yuli sekarang hmm, wari perempuan dan cuma mulai ikut. Yuli's auntie, Oma Ludi, says she's not only the first person to come out as a warrior at university, but the first person in their entire family to ever attend one. Nah, saat ini sudah beda. Kami dulu waria tidak sekolah, dulu waria dianggap adalah orang yang hanya bisa di pinggir jalan atau pelacur. Sekarang kami sudah tampil sebagai sarjana, kami bisa tampil di publik sebagai orang-orang yang punya interest yang cukup. Orang juga memandang sudah agak beda. But generally, warriors still face significant obstacles to their acceptance by society. Walaupun banyak sekali terjadi stigma dan diskriminasi, tapi kami mengharapkan ini proses dari kehidupan dan kenyataan dari hidup. Mama Yuli grew up in a Catholic village over 3,000 kilometers away in West Papua. Born as Julianus Retoblaut to parents who were school teachers. Ini waktu saya masih sekolah SD di kampung, sekolah dasar bersama ibu di kampung. Waktu lagi komuni pertama ada di gereja. Berjalan ini sudah SMA, ini SMA-nya. Nanti sejak SMA selesai SMA kelas 1, 2, 3 itu sudah mulai nampak seperti wanita. Julianus was still a man when he went to Jakarta. When he attended university to study law, he became a she and named herself Yuli. Yang ini foto pertama kali saya menjadi waria pertama masih terlalu seram mukanya. Once her family found out, they cut all contact. Kita tidak setuju. Anda juga? Saya belum tahu mengenai begitu, iya. 
When Yuli's mother died, her eldest son, a policeman, tracked Yuli down. Jadi pernah taruh pistol di kepala. Dia bilang harus berhenti dari waria ini. Jadi laki-laki yang normal, berkeluarga yang normal, supaya punya turunan. Aku menangis setiap hari. Karena ketika aku bangun, aku gak bisa makan. Tepat, gak ada yang mau ngasih. Aku makan, aku menangis. Tapi siapa yang mau nolong saya waktu itu, gak ada. She took a low-paid job cleaning the rooms of a brothel to pay her school fees and then became a sex worker. For the next 17 years, she survived poverty and abuse on the streets. But even amongst her fellow warrior sex workers, she struggled to get accepted. Mereka tidak suka saya ada di sana karena saya di sini hanya hanya ada di sana hanya mereka yang punya wajah cantik. Over and again, she was teased and harassed for being too black and too ugly. One night, she'd had enough and attacked one of her tormentors. Saya sudah sudah tidak sabar lagi karena saya selalu dihina dan saya mengambil sebuah pisau dan menusuk badan waria itu. Dan kemudian pada waktu itu orang akan takut kepada saya. Dan kemudian mereka mengangkat saya sebagai, udah kamu di sini aja untuk jadi jadi gangster. Dan semua orang yang mau mengadakan pertentangan dengan waria yang tidak bau bayarnya benar, saya berhadapan dengan saya dan saya akan membuat suatu perkalian besar melawan mereka. Dan di situ mulai saya bisa hidup dan mereka memberi putih kepada saya. She's brought me to Taman Lawang, famous for its warrior sex workers in central Jakarta. All these years later, instead of striking fear, Mama Yuli commands respect. Di sini juga kita lihat bahwa di sini ada bintang Taman Lawang di sini ya, memang dia punya cukup punya nama besar dan sangat terkenal karena dia sangat cantik dengan temannya ya dari Kalimantan juga di sini. Dan ini ada waria remaja yang baru mulai menetas dan dia mulai belajar sebagai seorang model dan dia pintar sekali dalam acting. Even though sex work is widely practiced and accepted in Indonesia, it's still illegal. This makes waria sex workers vulnerable to police raids and puts them at risk to abusive would-be clients. Kalau jauh tanya trauma, pernah dipukulin tamu di dalam mobil. Mama Yuli has been a great advocate for the warrior here. Ini Mama Yuli the best. Kenapa? Hah? Mengapa? Membela perjuangan waria. Setelah Mama Yuli, setelah Mama Yuli ada jadi ketua di sini, kita tuh merasa terangkat sekarang. Kalau waria ada masalah atau terdapat masalah apapun, dia selalu turun tangan. Sudah, sudah. Ya. She also worries about their health. The HIV/AIDS epidemic in Indonesia is one of the fastest growing in Asia. But the waria in Taman Lawang have been very active in getting out the safe sex message. No condom, no sex, no fucking, no honey. I ask Mama Yuli how she survived AIDS after 17 years on the streets when most of her friends didn't. Ya, kalau saya waktu itu ya karena saya terus terang aja saya tidak laku, jadi saya kurang melakukan hubungan saya kepada berganti-ganti pasangan. Jadi saya agak selamat dari bahaya seperti itu. <laughs> Traditionally, waria sex workers would meet customers on the street, but now young waria like Vira are also using social media to book clients from home. Ada sebagai uh, ada nomor aku di situ kan? Mm -hmm. Kita masang nomor kita di situ dan orang bisa hubungin kita karena dia lihat kita di situ. But one thing that hasn't changed is the stigma and discrimination. When Vera first got here, it was almost impossible to get office work. She had few options. Nggak boleh kerja? Bukan nggak boleh kerja karena kayak kita ini kan belum tentu diterima di di kalangan masyarakat. Vera's backstory is all too common among the warrior. Ya inilah diri aku. Untuk dilarang-larang, aku belum bisa. Akhirnya ada konflik untuk masalah keluarga dan aku belum bisa diterima. Aku kabur dari rumah. She found her way to Jakarta and to Mama Yuli, who tried to help mediate with her parents. Unfortunately, it didn't work out the way Vera had hoped. Kenapa sedih? Aku dapat nama. 
kenapa? Cuman aku di sini berusaha untuk yang terbaik buat keluarga. Dan aku kangen adik-adikku yang di sana. Oh, nggak pernah lihat lagi gitu, anak adikmu? Sempat pulang sekali. Cuman dari orang tua laki belum bisa nerima aja. Rejected by her parents, Vera has had to forge a new future. But she's not alone. Working with Mama Yuli, she's part of the next generation working for warrior rights. She juggles her activism with a hectic work schedule. After getting ready for the night, she drags her boyfriend away from the football and they head out to see her first client. Vera is focused on making money now, while she's still young, because she's seen older warrior who can no longer trade on their looks struggle to survive. In Indonesia, families look after their elders, but most warrior have no one to rely on but themselves. This has inspired Mama Yuli to open a drop-in center for aging waria. Karena hampir kebagian sebagian besar waria 85% waria yang ada di Indonesia ini mereka adalah rata-rata urban dari daerah yang orang tua menolak mereka. Orang tua malu kalau punya anak waria, kakaknya malu kalau punya adik waria. Akhirnya mendesak mereka sehingga mereka lari tanpa punya pendidikan yang cukup, tidak mempunyai keterampilan yang cukup sehingga mereka lebih memilih untuk bekerja sebagai pengamen atau PSK jalanan. Inilah yang membuat mereka sehingga mereka akhirnya hidup seperti itu. Mereka termarginalkan karena pendidikan karena mereka miskin. Kami di sini tidak uh, tidak membedakan satu sama yang lain mau profesi apa, pekerjaan apa, kita semua di sini dirangkul semuanya. Di sini juga dikasih keterampilan kayak potong rambut, ya memasak. Satu yang masih mejeng, satu yang ke, uh, servis keliling elektronik, satu masih nyari nyari dalam uh, pekerjaan serabutan apa aja bisa dikerjakan satu ini tukang urut tukang pijit bikin di belakang dan ini akan dirapin dari sini sampai di dapur belakang sana mungkin akan di plester mungkin kita akan minta bantu kepada mereka untuk itu bisa Mama Yuli's drop-in center also serves as a retirement home the first of its kind in Indonesia Today, university students from the Department of Criminology are visiting. Kemudian kita lihat bahwa banyak sekali teman-teman yang dipukulin, ditangkapin sapol PP, disiksa, ditenanjangin. Kemudian dari ormas agama sampai beberapa teman saya yang kakinya dibacok sampai putus. Ada waria juga dibakar, waria ditembak mati, dimutilasi. Yang aku lihat berkali-kali kejadian terjadi, tapi kok tidak ada sekali ketika kita ke kantor polisi, mereka tidak pernah mau menolong kita. Mereka tidak mau mengatakan seperti ini, walaupun kita benar tetap selalu dikatakan salah. The students are typical young moderate Indonesians, but they've never had any contact with Waria before, and meeting Yuli has given them new insight. Dan dalam kelas anda ada yang masih tidak setuju dengan hak-hak Waria? Uh, sepertinya sih uh, mungkin kebanyakan besar seperti itu sebagian besar karena kita sendiri pun tadinya berpikir yang seperti demikian, tapi setelah kita ngobrol sama Yuli ternyata. Wah ini ternyata sangat berbeda dan uh, mereka punya inovasi yang banyak mengenai hak asasi hak asasi yang mereka punya kayak gitu. While many Indonesians are starting to accept Waria, the threat from the small but vocal group of extremists is still very real. Kita berada di depan kondisi perusak moral karena Komnas Ham kemudian homo dan lesbi. In Indonesian society, we are very um, fond of claiming that we are tolerant and moderate, and it is true, in fact, but it's the extremist uh, groups who create a lot of noise, and they're the ones who um, make all the protests. These hardliners often target Waria events, shutting down their meetings and beauty pageants, so preparations for the National Waria Congress have been kept under wraps. Selamat siang. Dateline is the only invited media. It's not a good idea to publicize that Waria have flown in from 15 provinces across Indonesia for the two-day meeting. Okay. It's a busy few days of brainstorming and discussion about the many issues they face.
All of the delegates are staying at the Conference Centre Hotel, five or six to each room. There never seems to be enough time to make themselves up before the next session. Finally finished. <laughs> but there's no sign of makeup or high heels in the room next door. These guys were born women and live as men. Here, okay, uh, since I was a little, I always feel like I'm a man. I talk like a man and I think like a man. Everything I do is just like a man. Uh, dimulai ketika saya harus menggunakan pakaian yang berbeda ketika saya berangkat sekolah dengan kakak saya. Aditya is classed as intersex, born with a vagina but with testicles inside his body. It took many years of psychological hell with his parents to figure that out. Selalu ada kata-kata kamu perempuan, mereka laki-laki. Sedangkan saya merasa bahwa itu adalah hal yang aneh. Saya merasa saya adalah seperti mereka. Saya depresi. Ketika saya berkaca, saya merasa bahwa ini bukan saya. It's not me. Like so many transgender and intersex people who have lacked family support, Adit has gone to extreme lengths in his desperation. Menyayat lebih banyak. Menyayat, kemudian saya minum uh, racun serangga. Um, beberapa kali pernah uh, mencoba untuk uh, diri dengan cara yang lebih ekstrim lagi. His mother now feels like she's lost a daughter, but Aditya feels better about himself than ever before. Saya mulai memperkenalkan diri saya sebagai saya yang apa adanya tanpa saya perlu takut untuk apa nanti kata orang, apa nanti kata orang. Now he wants to have an operation to release the testicles trapped inside him. Pritz too wants surgical solutions. I was born in the wrong body. At least God, please let me die in the right body. Just simple like that. Okay. In every hotel room, one topic keeps coming up the horrible murder-suicide in Brisbane last year of Mayang Prasetyo. She was the Indonesian warrior whose death was a big splash for the tabloid press in both Australia and Indonesia. Marcus Vol took his girlfriend Mayang's life in the most gruesome way. A transsexual woman murdered and cooked by her boyfriend was a sex worker who was supporting her family in Indonesia. Media mengangkat masalah isu transgendernya Mayang dan lebih memprovokatif artinya sisi negatif dari seorang Mayang. Much of the media eroticized Mayang with tantalizing headlines while others referred to her only as a man, ignoring her chosen gender completely. Michelle retrieved his friend's body and took her home to her parents. Ada sekitar kurang lebih 40 sampai 50 mobil iring-iringan jenazah. Sebenarnya yang kita rencanakan itu hanya maksimal 10 mobil, termasuk mobil jenazah gitu kan. Dan sepanjang jalan juga antusias warga Lampung di pinggir jalan untuk melihat Mayang. Mayang is on everyone's minds, especially today. It's International Transgender Memorial Day, held each year to remember the victims of transphobia attacks worldwide. The Jakarta crew have finished up at their Congress and are on their way to the National Human Rights Commission to present their Congress declaration on their human rights. They want their gender recognized legally. The way things are, it's as if they are denied citizenship because unless you can say in your identity card that you are a third gender, then you don't have full rights uh, citizenship. It's not, it's not recognized that as a waria, as a third gender, that you are a citizen. Tidak diperbolehkan adanya penyiksaan, torture, dan sebagainya untuk kaum uh, LGBT. Tidak diperbolehkannya diskriminasi uh, bagi kaum LGBT. Fine words, but that very evening, 500 kilometers away, four warrior attacked at another event marking Transgender Memorial Day in Yogyakarta. It's odd because Yogyakarta is a city with a reputation for tolerance, where warrior buskers roam the streets unmolested, even admired. Cantik. Yang mana? 
Most locals just laugh along with them. But they wouldn't want to sing their song to this man. Datang seorang waria pengamen. Kan kami langsung usir. Langsung kami usir. Kami tidak ada toleransi dengan orang-orang semacam itu. Muhammad Fuad is from the Yogyakarta branch of Islamic Hardliners, Forum Umat Islam. Mereka harus tahu bahwa kami terusik dengan dandanan mereka, dengan keberadaan mereka, dengan tingkah laku mereka. Mereka tidak boleh merasa dirinya wajar dan normal. He insists his group had nothing to do with the attack on Transgender Memorial Day, but says it's a good lesson for them. Ini harus menjadi pelajaran bahwa mereka tidak se tidak bisa seenaknya menunjukkan eksistensi mereka di ruang publik. But Indonesia is full of surprises. Not far away, in a typical family neighborhood, there's even an Islamic school or pesantren, especially for waria. It's run by Mama Shinta. Ini sesuatu yang harus kita jalani. Kemudian mau tidak mau harus kita jalani dan kita akhirnya rido, kita akhirnya ikhlas. Dan dengan keikhlasan itu, kemudian kita jadi dekat dengan yang menciptakan, yang mengharuskan kita menjadi seorang waria yaitu Allah. Every Sunday they gather to discuss the place of waria in Islam and study the Quran. Meskipun itu waria, mereka juga ada jiwa-jiwa uh, spiritual. Nah, jiwa spiritual itu harus dipupuk, harus dipupuk dengan cara apapun. Islam in Indonesia is also much more tolerant than it's certainly not Islam in the mid, like in the Middle East. I like to call it tropical Islam. Here, unlike in mosques elsewhere, waria can pray as women and not feel like sinners. The Pesantren has even achieved support from the local government. Dan harus sesegera mungkin dibubarkan. Ini salah kaprah bagi kami ini justru cenderung melecehkan ajaran agama Islam. Islam itu menerima waria. Islam itu menerima waria karena Allah itu tidak melihat hambanya, tidak melihat manusia itu dari orientasi seksual. Muzayin Ayer is not a warrior, but the ustad, or religious leader and teacher, who leads the prayers here. His attendance is controversial amongst his friends and family. Keluarga juga awalnya menolak. Habis itu, terutama ibu saya ya. Ibu saya juga menolak. Itu kenapa kamu gini 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 gini? Ini kan sebenarnya dia menolak apa istilahnya? Menolak takdir. Ingin mengubah takdir. Saya ingin berbuat demi kemanusiaan gitu loh. Saya anggap waria itu manusia, jadi layak untuk mendapatkan uh, legitimasi sosial. After her many years of struggle for waria rights, Mama Yuli's family have also come around. Tapi begitu tahu yang dia jadi ketua waria se Indonesia, malah sekarang berbalik bangga lagi. Sekian banyak waria di sini yang tampil pertama itu Mama Yuli. Despite the imminent executions, many Indonesians still see President Widodo as a reformer. There's hope he'll usher in a new era of greater acceptance for all minorities and a breakthrough on waria rights. The initial signs are good if his reaction to waria comedian Dorce is anything to go by. Mama Yuli hopes that one day Indonesian Waria will echo the success of other transgender people around the world. Tetapi 10 15 tahun ke depan kalau sudah ada 3000 sampai 5 Waria yang mereka S3 S2 mungkin akan beda. The Waria or transgender want to play a role in life in, in society. Mereka bisa duduk sebagai ibu direktur bank, mereka bisa duduk sebagai misalnya menteri-menteri dan ini bisa akan merubah seluruh image masyarakat negatif itu. The, the challenge is there for the entire Indonesian society. The way that waria is treated with, is a reflection of what kind of nation state we want. Kita yakin mungkin menurut saya bahwa ke depan ini akan ada celah untuk kemudian bagaimana waria itu kemudian bisa diterima layak di dalam masyarakat.